oftentimes, it's ideal to have the best of both worlds, like Honda's Pioneer lineup, amazing work machines that are also lots of fun on the trails. But sometimes, you just want the absolute best of one world. Meet the 2019 Honda Talon 1000X. Okay, that's the Honda Talon X, which we're not really gonna be discussing, and we'll talk about why. Well, we're not gonna really be discussing the X model because we're pretty biased, just based on the type of riding that we do, the locations, the terrain. Um, it wouldn't make sense for us to even talk about that model, really. How awesome it is. Okay, so for this video, kind of wanted to kind of set the stage because we're going to give our opinion. <clears throat> we're going to give our opinion about the side by side market as it stands today in light of the release of the Honda Talon. And so if I go back almost 20 years ago, probably at least 18 years ago, more like 19, closer to 20. I know we've only known each other for four weeks and three days. But to me, it seems like nine weeks and five days. The first day seemed like a week, it seemed like eight days. Uh, was my first experience with uh, any kind of off-road, dune buggy, sand rail kind of situation. And that was a, um, <clears throat> that was a dune buggy I bought for probably 12 or $1,300. It was a Volkswagen suspension, Volkswagen transmission, Volkswagen engine. Uh, I'll take it back. I have it written down, but I can, I can show it to you tomorrow if you want. Not a Volkswagen engine, but a Pinto hanging off the back of it. It wasn't much. I paid twelve or thirteen hundred bucks for it. It came with a trailer, so that kind of tells you, you know, what it was. But I loved it. It was awesome. Took it out to Pismo a few times. Enjoyed it. Got rid of that. Uh, next car was a all Volkswagen, Volkswagen engine. You know, it's basically the same car with a Volkswagen engine that turned out to be probably a 1776 that ran pretty good. Uh, it needed a tune-up. I did so on my own. Actually, it needed more than, than a tune-up. I thought it needed carburetors. I put dual levers on it. Made it run good. Spun the engine too fast. Hurt the engine. That's when I met uh, Scott from Metalcraft Motorsports. He built the engine for me. At the time, I had uh, small children. Found a four-seater frame. Uh, took the drivetrain out of that car, everything I needed, made a four-seater out of it. Had a good time riding that. Eventually got rid of that, kind of got out of it for a while. Then I got a Funko Big Five. That was like big time for me. looking thing but those are good handling cars it was originally a Volkswagen car I bought it as a roller so no engine no tranny needed paint it needed everything it was a mess before I bought the actual car itself um, I had purchased a um, Subaru engine just I mean straight out of the car like cables cut plumbing cut uh, in Napomo which is near Pismo you know Oceano Dunes California so I bought that engine <clears throat> with the intentions of building the car. Came across this frame, long story. The frame had belonged to Scott from Metalcraft Motorsports. He sold it to a guy, traded it to a guy, whatever. I got it, purchased it from that guy, built that car over about two years, uh, had it powder coated, cleaned it up. Put the Subaru engine in it, uh, built a wiring harness myself for the car, programmed the computer. I mean, every single nut and bolt you can imagine. Um, I should have had stock at Orchard Supply. They actually just went out of business here locally in Fresno. I'm assuming nationwide, statewide, whatever they were. Anyway, put that car together. That car was uh, Fox 2.0 shocks. Uh, airbags so separate airbags Fox 2.0 shocks 
but that was the first car where I felt like, you know, kind of getting serious. Like I could actually, um, it was pretty fast. Super engine put out probably, I don't know, 200 horsepower, a little more. Uh, turbocharged Subaru 2 liter. Uh, pretty fast, uh, climb any hill, go anywhere I want, jump a little bit. Uh, enough suspension that you could get a decent ride out of it and, you know, go over the whoops at pretty good speed. About that time, my cousin got into um, the side by thing. My cousin Dean, he's in a lot of the videos. He bought first a uh, four seater, I'm sorry, he bought first a Rhino, ended up doing a Rotex conversion and that. Um, after the Rhino, he went to a four seater Razor. Um, all along the way, I was like, here, drive this car, see what you think. And, and they were pretty cool, but it wasn't what I was into at the time. Four seater. Uh, when he first got it, I liked it, but it was really choppy in the, um, you know, driving around camp in Pismo in the sand where the sand's kind of beat up, just beat you up going through that stuff. The Walker Evan needle valve shocks came out. When those came out and he put those, when he converted his car to those, upgraded his car to those, then it was a game changer. Everything was different. Um, after that, he ended up with a two-seater. Uh, Brandy and I took a ride in the two-seater up in the snow, kind of decided, you know, we were going to do this. We were going to go into the side-by-side -side thing. So we bought our first side-by-side, -side, the 2015 uh, 1000 NA that's in our older videos. Uh, and we put 3,000 miles on that car. And now we're in the Can-Am. We're about 1,000 miles into this. So about 20 years for me. And about, uh, we are into, what, fourth, going on the fifth year, somewhere around there, of side-by-sides. So, based on that experience is, is how I formed my opinions that I'm going to talk about in this video. So, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna do just, we're just gonna look at a quick comparison of all the cars that, you know, that are out there right now. Basically, what we would compare this to would be what the, you know, the Can-Am Maverick X3 RS. I mean, technically it's a different machine, different horsepower, different uh, travel, different wheelbase, all that. But, you know, if we're gonna buy a car today, that would be one of the cars, uh, RZR Turbo S. Uh, really comparable to the Can-Am Maverick X3. Um, and then what else? The, uh, the Razor 1000 NA. Yeah, which is pro it's probably more uh, more comparable to that car because it's uh, you know it's about the same size, same closer to the wheel, same wheelbase, right? Yeah, the Razor 1000 NA. The wheelbase is 73.75 inches. And what's the Honda? Let me look. I have it right here. I think. So they're really comparable, uh, that and then the YXZ uh, 1000R, which is what, 90, in 90 inches, about 90 inch wheelbase, 64 inches wide, the 1000 64 inches wide, and the Wildcat X, XX yeah. is 95 long, 64 inches wide. So those are all the cars that, you know, we would compare. We said we were biased, and the reason I say we're biased is because we ride sand. Right. Uh, we don't ride trails. We like the car to be as long and as wide as we can because that you know just feels more stable. Uh, goes through the whoops better. We feel like standing at nearly 69 inches wide, it's built for speed over rugged terrain. Featuring a four-plus length rear suspension with over 20 inches of travel, the R excels at high-speed tracking. Width of the car, all that, not being equal amongst all of them, but pretty close. The Maverick being the longest car. And again, bias, and when we say bias, because of the riding, uh, the locations that we ride. We don't ride uh, small trails, so we don't need a narrow car. We need a wide car right. for stability. We need a long car to get through the whoops um, smoother. We need more wheel travel. And the reason we uh, use so much horsepower is because we ride in the sand. Sand takes a lot of horsepower. The 999cc liquid-cooled engine has been optimized for max acceleration and near endless power. But let me ask you a question as far as like engine size, because we always talked about 1,000 cc's being the max, right? 
Everybody's maxing out at 1,000 cc. Well, I'm just saying because the can, we only have, this one's at 900 cc, right? Something else is higher than that? Well, yeah, so, you know, the manufacturers are playing a game, and the game they're playing is basically um, drop down to a 900, turbocharge it. That way, in a couple of years, when they start bumping up the cc's and the bigger turbos, more horsepower, they can get you to you know, spend that $30,000 again on a new car. Then there's our exclusive six-speed automatic dual clutch transmission. Drive in fully automatic mode or manual mode via paddle shifters mounted right on the steering column. Either way, nothing gets engine power to the ground like our DCT. So something I've been curious about, so you have this uh, dual clutch transmission compared to, say, um, a belt. With the CVT, um, you know, you have a range of gearing, so from your lowest gearing to your highest gearing, but in between that is infinitely adjustable. It's, you're, not, you're not making big leaps in, you know, from first to second to third to fourth to fifth to sixth. It's just infinite in between. So I'm curious to see, you know, how that puts the power down compared to a six-speed uh, dual-clutch transmission. It'd be interesting to see someone take, uh, you know, like a, an engine dyno, connect, the exact same power plant to both drive to both uh, transmissions to a CVT and to a six-speed uh, dual clutch transmission and see what the efficiency is of both systems. Engineering excellence, unparalleled quality. That's how life is better side by side in the all-new Talon 1000R from Honda. So it'd be interesting to see how this car feels. Uh, the width of the car being 68.4 inches wide. The wheelbase, 92.7 inches. Um, so it seems like it might be a pretty stable car. It'd be interesting to see how it feels to the whoops compared to the Mavic X3, the Turbo S. Um, again, horsepower. Curious to see how that goes down. Honestly, I think we were both kind of hoping that Honda was going to come out fighting. Just like blasting the competition, you know, like a 72 inch wide, 102 inch plus maybe wheelbase, like a fire breathing 180 horsepower well, or more. I, yeah, definitely. I mean, but that is not the case. But I want to throw this out there. Don't get us wrong. We still want one. We really do. Um, and we're glad that this happened. We always like when the competition you know, it just makes it better for all of us. Um, we've been waiting for this day, and even though that's not the machine that we were kind of hoping for, um, regardless of your bias towards the machine that you already own or maybe the one that you dream of owning, we still think it's pretty cool. I do. I want one. Yeah, so hopefully we can get our hands on one at some point. And because it's a Honda, you can rip all day and let our signature reliability take care of the rest. <laughs>